Hello, this is Jay Paul Drury, and this is my video for History 711, Module 3, Week 3. I'll be trying to explain the differences between freedom and liberty in early Western civilization. Liberty and freedom have never meant exactly the same thing, in large part because of their differences in ancestries. But over time, they were used interchangeably, and today they are often used as synonyms. Let's take a look at how the origin and meaning of each might explain the differences in meaning in early Western civilization. The term freedom comes from German Old English and came to English through the Anglo-Saxons who invaded England beginning in the second half of the 5th century. Freedom comes from the same root word as friend, an Indo-European word that meant dear or beloved. It meant a connection to other free people by bonds of kinship or affection, and it reflects a concept of Northern Europe. Liberty comes from Latin, making its way into English through the French-speaking Norman invaders. The Latin libertas and the Greek eleftoria both indicated a condition of independence, unlike a slave. And this reflects, this reflects thinking of a Mediterranean world. Political theorist Hannah Fentanyl Pitkin, in her 1988 essay, Are Freedom and Liberty Twins, wrote that freedom is more likely to be holistic and to mean a total condition or state of being, whereas liberty is more likely to be plural and piecemeal. Another way of putting it, freedom is the capacity to do things in the world, while liberty is the absence of external institutional constraints. Liberty and freedom both meant unlike a slave to the people of early Western civilization. But liberty had privileges of independence to the ancient Western world of Rome and Greece, and freedom referred to rights of belonging to the early Anglo-Saxons of Northern Europe and then later of Britain. So what did the difference between freedom and liberty in early Western civilization mean to the framers of the United States Constitution? The founding fathers were very literate and well aware of what the ancients thought of freedom and liberty. Uh, in his dialogue with the ancients, Thomas Jefferson and the Classical Philosophy and History, the author Carl, say, Carl J. Richard notes the importance of the classics to the founding fathers. He highlights the importance of history and the vital roles that Epicurus, Tacitus, and other ancients played in Thomas Jefferson, the chief author of the Declaration of Independence thinking. Uh, Richard explains that Jefferson considered Epicurus and the Stoic philosophers the best guide for metaphysics, and Jesus as the best guide for ethics. Dorothy in Robothan, in her work, John Adams and the Classics, notes that in John Adams' library, Greek and Latin classes were represented by almost a hundred volumes in the original, uh, besides translations from some authors into English or French. The, these two men and the other founders who gathered together at the uh, Philadelphia, in Philadelphia at the Assembly Room of the Pennsylvania State House, now known as Independence Hall, uh, to frame our Constitution, had read and studied the thoughts of the classic authors and their intellectual heirs, and they were well aware of the meanings of both liberty and freedom and proceeded to incorporate those ideas of property rights, freedom from government, interference, and many other the freedoms uh, into the documents uh, which govern our lives today. So thank you for watching my video. I look forward to reading your comments. Uh, may the Lord bless you. Thank you.